Oh, we got a good one for you today. The orbital overlap diagram of C2H2, which is also known as ethyne, but also as acetylene. Now you may want to draw yourself a Lewis structure so you can visualize what's happening. You have two carbon atoms, you have two hydrogen atoms, one on each side, and the ion here might already tell you that it's a triple bond between the carbons. If it's not, just try drawing a Lewis structure that contains four times two plus one times two, 10 valence electrons that satisfies the octet rule on both carbons. You'll find the only option is to have a triple bond between the two. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is you need to explain the hybridization on each of these carbons. In a triple bond, you always have one sigma bond and the other two bonds are called pi bonds. That's significant because it means the hybridization of carbon needs to leave behind two p orbitals. Let me draw you the unhybridized electron configuration for carbon. I'll even include the 1s orbital here, which is not involved in bonding. Sigma, our carbon also has a 2s and some 2p orbitals, but then carbon only has four electrons in its valence shell. So you go one, two, three, four. This is the unhybridized version of a carbon atom in terms of an electron configuration. In this molecule, you need each carbon to have two pi bonds. What that means is that two of these p orbitals cannot be used in hybridization. You need to reserve those to make the pi bonds. The only orbitals that are going to be allowed to hybridize here are the 2s and then one of the 2ps. Doesn't actually matter which one you take. If you're combining a single s and a single p, you might recognize that that makes an sp hybrid orbital. Get it? 1s, 1p, sp. Now the 1s did not change. I'm just gonna emphasize that by putting it here. And this had four electrons in it total. You actually have to violate, I think it's the Aufbau principle here or Hun's rule or something. One, two, three, four, spread your electrons out. Okay. The reason I had to bring up hybridization is because you need to draw the proper orbitals for this diagram. You need to know that sp hybridized orbitals arrange themselves linearly, 180 degrees apart from each other. If I was going to draw this carbon's sp orbitals, I would put a c here, and I would have one sp looking orbital going to the right, and another one going to the left, 180 degrees away. Note that this is one of the SPs, and this is one of the SPs. Great. Now, the other carbon also has one sigma and two pi bonds here. Now, officially, it has another sigma bond here, but that's what the other SP orbital is going to be for. That's going to be this carbon. I'm going to try to get it to overlap just a little bit with that SP. I probably could have done with a little more overlap there, actually. Just trying to configure it the same way. This is another sp orbital, and that's another sp orbital. Now, just to emphasize what's happening with the hydrogens, hydrogen doesn't hybridize ever. You draw yourself an H with a circle around it, because that's what a 1s orbital looks like, and the 1s is all that ever bonds for hydrogen. I'll label that here, and we need one here as well. You can kind of see the molecule taking shape, but we've only accounted for the hybridized orbitals. This carbon has two sp's, and this carbon has two sp's. Where are the two p's? That's where it gets more interesting and why your teacher probably asked you this question. The two p orbitals 
look like peanuts in that they go up and down, like a single orbital has an upper and a lower one, and they arrange themselves perpendicular to the bond axis. I'm gonna draw this one first. I'm just gonna put that there to guide your eyes. The 2p orbital, this is half of it, and this is the other half of it. Combined, these make that one 2p orbital. And this carbon also has an extra 2p orbital. Lastly, uh, what's another good color here? Let's use this green, I guess. The extra 2p needs to be 90 degrees away from this carbon and 90 degrees away from the bond axis. The only way to draw that is to try to get it so it looks like it's coming out of the page at you. Putting it on a slight angle might help guide people's eyes. And then the other half of that 2p needs to look like it's going back into the page. You need to pick the same angle to put the other carbon's extra 2p orbital on. You might be able to see that if I had a three-dimensional like octahedral arrangement here, it makes sense to put two at 90 degrees to each other, but then this other one, which is definitely going into the page and coming out at you, a little diagonal on that helps people recognize that there's some three-dimensionality to it. I'd like to point out that these two 2p leftover orbitals are technically overlapping. We draw that by connecting those lines. These two orange lines together make one pi bond. Perhaps it's the double bond between the carbons. These leftover 2p orbitals overlap in the same way. Now, to emphasize the three-dimensionality here, I'm gonna pretend that you can't see the overlap behind this orbital, so I'm gonna skip behind it and make it overlap there. Notice I went in front of it here, because it's like closer to you, so it would obscure its view, but over here it was behind the orbital, so I went behind it to emphasize what's in front. That is another pi bond. That would make it the triple bond between the two. What you've done here is drawn the orbital overlap diagram. I didn't actually label this. I always label my straight up and down ones 2PY. I don't know if your teacher gave you a different rule for that or not. And then I'm going to label the ones coming out of the page 2PZ. It's just a habit of mine as well. It's kind of like the X, Y, and Z axes in math, if you've seen them. This is the orbital overlap diagram. Some teachers might want you to show the actual bonds. For example, there are two electrons in the single bond between carbon and hydrogen. There's me drawing them the same way I would draw them in an electron configuration diagram. And I can label that as a sigma bond between the 1s of hydrogen and the sp of carbon. You can do the same on this side. That's a sigma bond between the 1s of hydrogen and the sp of carbon. Between the two carbons, I have a sigma bond here between hybridized sp orbitals. That's a sigma sp sp. This orange one, we've agreed, is a pi, it's between the 2py of each carbon. And the green here is another pi bond between the 2pzs of each carbon. I'm not sure where you might draw the actual electrons to emphasize those. Perhaps you wanna draw it there and there just to emphasize that this ring of orange holds two electrons. And I, and I also want to re-emphasize that even though there are two lines connecting these two PYs, the whole thing combined is a single extra bond.
Great. There's an actually fully complete orbital overlap diagram. Thanks for being with me. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Take care and best of luck.